focusing on the cultural history of communist countries. Yet many approaches to the Eastern European communist culture still placed an emphasis on strong influence from the Soviet Union. However, the official cultures of Eastern European countries are not very meaningful reproductions. So there are need to put more focus on differences among official cultures of communist countries. My purpose in this paper is to examine the iconography of Yugoslav heroes and heroines between the Second World War and mid-50s and compare this iconography with its origins, namely Soviet cases. In the first part, I examine the war propaganda, focusing on the visual image of partisan murders. In the second <coughs> part, I compare the visual images of working heroes and heroines. As Andrzej Schnarski said, the cult of the heroi is generally endemic to Soviet civilization. And the Stalinist period in particular created various heroes from political regions, the party officials, the scientists, pilots, and ordinary individuals who made remarkable contributions to the state. This led to the establishment of the title Hero of the Soviet Union in 1934. This title played an important motivating role for soldiers on the front lines during the World War II. The first female recipient of the Hero of Soviet Union was young partisan Zoya Kosmetmianskaya. Kosmetmianskaya was a high school girl when she volunteered for a partisan unit in 1941. In the middle of her duty, Kosmetmianskaya was captured by Germans and hanged in public. Just before the execution, she famously called out to the villagers, shouting, there are 200 millions of us, you can't hang us all. This episode has still reported in the Pravda article, and she became one of the most famous partisan youth. The same year, Stirling awarded her an order of hero of the Soviet Union. Numerous buildings and organizations were subsequently named after her. Many poems, student tales, and songs tell her story, and her image was represented in statues, paintings, and films. The film Zoya also depicts in detail how Kosmetmianskaya was born, became a partisan, and was executed. <coughs> Another representative figure of Soviet partisan murder is Alexander Matrosov. Legend has it that in the battle near Peskov in 1943, the infantry soldier Matrosov threw himself over a German pillbox and blocked the machine gun with his own body. For the honor of his self-sacrifice, Matrosov was posthumously awarded the, the hero of the Soviet Union in 1943. As was the case of Kosmit Mianskaya, many songs, paintings, statues, and film was dedicated to Matrosov. Visual images of the moment of the death were collect collectively constructed based on reported episode. Their heroic, heroic deeds came known not from technically recorded evidence by camera, but from words of mouth of witnesses and through visual images created by various artists. This way, no visualizing heroes can be found widely in Soviet propaganda, especially under Stalin's regime. For instance, there is a case of a pioneer boy, public Morozov, who was killed by his relatives for turning his father in as an anti-communist and posthumously praised for this bravery to put ideological value before family ties. But there are many paintings that depict the scene when he accuses his father, yet this moment is not technologically recorded. The Soviet concept of creating heroes was imported into the Eastern European countries and played a significant role in forming new socialist regimes. As early as in 1941, the Yugoslav partisan established the over the order of the people's hero. Two of the four famous recipients were Montenegrin Uvo Cipic and Croatian Stepan Filipovic. A particular feature of the images of Yugoslav partisan martyrs is that each murder has one famous portrait photograph taken second before the execution. One such murder was Ljubo Cupic, a war student who joined the communist resistance movement and captured by Chetnik collaborators in Yekšić and publicly uh, executed by a firing squad in 1942. In his execution photograph, taken by an anonymous photographer, Cupic stands with his hand cast like this, and, but flashing a smile, revealing a gap between his moderate smile and the tragedy awaiting him, this photograph became a symbol of strong will and firm readiness in the face of the enemy. This image was used widely in partisan propaganda and also in post-war education. 
And in 1947, Cupid was awarded the People's Hero of Yugoslavia. This is just a graffiti, but uh, you, you see the, the face and pose is same. And Filipovic is another icon of Yugoslav partisan murder, a commander of one local person unit in Valuable. Filipovic was captured by uh, ex Arlades in 1942. According to the region, seconds before he has hanged, Filipovic thrust his hand out and shouted, Death to fascism, freedom to the people, afraid that he and the official slogan of person. This moment was recorded in a photograph taken um, by an amateur photographer, Slobodan Kovacic. In the photograph, Filipovic is making a speech with his neck already tied to the gallows. In 1944, this photograph appeared for the first time on the front page of Politica newspaper, and this provocative image soon became an icon of communist resistance in Yugoslavia. The, this image briefly appeared in Soviet most films propaganda film for Yugoslavia in the mountains of Yugoslavia, uh, directed by Abraham Brom in 1945, and there are even several statues erected of Filipovich in the same pose. As was the case of Chupic, Filipovic's photograph has also been widely circulated in newspapers and textbooks in, in the former Yugoslavia. Compared to partisan heroes in the Soviet Union, Yugoslav partisan heroes are unique in that they are known through the photo images taken at the moment of the death. Photographs of Chupic and Filipovic created piercing impression by dramatizing the imminent moment of their death. Now I'm moving to the second part of my presentation. In the Soviet Union after the 30s, many Soviets were admired as being a new man. Among these heroes are figures such as Anatoly Yapidesky, this is public moral speech I mentioned, and this is Anatoly Yapidesky, an aircraft pilot who was the first to be awarded the title of the hero of the Soviet Union in 1934. Yet ordinary people who is not a part of nor is dead as well uh, had the opportunity to become a new man. It is working heroes called shock workers. During the second five-year five, five plan, the Soviet authority conducted a massive campaign to create high-status workers. Then Donbass coal miner Alexei Stakhanov had been chosen as an icon of this movement. On September 2nd, Pravda reported that Stakhanov dug up 102 tons of coal, uh, 14 times of his quarter, and there occurred a mass competition map among Donbass miners. On September 10th, the term Stakhanovite movement was, moved to, uh, was used to refer to the competition. Stahan white workers were expected to be exemplified, uh, exemplary figures of new man. They were visually constructed as an ideal citizen. Always neat and tidy, had a good family life, enjoyed culture, leisure, and so on. The mass media presented those workers as living up to their new roles as intellectually and materially fulfilled individuals. Cultural limit about intellectual development of Sahan white workers was manufactured in reports by the media, accompanied by uh, propagandistic photograph photographs. After Pravda reported about the achievement of Sahan, articles about Sahan appeared almost every day in Pravda. On September 9th, uh, Pravda ran a front page photograph of a smiling Sahan and Dukanov. After this, many articles on Stefan were accompanied by newly taken photographs of him. On October uh, 13th, the photograph of Stefan sporting his suits and tie appeared for the first time. Subsequent images of Stefan depict him dressed in a suit rather than the work clothes. And on the front page of this issue, which celebrated the anniversary of the October Revolution, Lenin and Stalin are portrayed on the both sides of the front page, and Stahinov and his comrades are gazing at the reader with a confident smile. And in this issue, in this issue November 10th, uh, we can find Stahinov in fur overcoat in Barishai theater, uh, wearing a solemn blue. 
And here, Stahanov is again dressed in a decent coat, a decent suit. In fact, there are hundreds of such pictures in Pravda and other sources. These pictures of Stahanov help readers to uh, keep up with his constantly changing image. The continuous reports in Stahanov, which are always accompanied by a new image, enables Soviet population to witness how the task of minus Stahanov had rapidly transformed into a cultured new man. After World War II, the Eastern European countries also pro pro produced many working heroes who were more or less offshots of Stahanov. Perhaps the most renowned of these is, although he is a fictional figure, a Polish bricklayer they put in Andrzej Weiss's film Man of Marble. These heroes played important roles not only in the Soviet, in Soviet Gulf countries of Eastern Europe, but also in other communist countries. For instance, China has its own hero, Leibstein, who whose propagandist role functions somewhere in between personal murder and working hero. Then was a soldier of People's Liberation Army of China. And then he was on duty near telephone pole. The truck hit the telephone pole and he died. And after his death, authority began uh, focusing his good deed and launched a mass campaign which called, uh, followed the examples of Comrade Lake Fen. So let's move to Yugoslavia. This former Yugoslavia was no exception and had its most famous working hero, Arya Sirotovich. The strategy of showing a single momentary fragment from history was not limited to the ethnography of parts of murders. For instance, there is a well-known photograph called Kozara Women, Kozara Chanka, taken by George Spigen in 1943. She became known not for any heroic deeds in war, but only because of this photograph. This photograph depicts a cheerfully working war nurse, Bosnian woman Milia Torma, beaming a smile. Since the photograph not only exemplified the women's royalty to the Communist Party, but also conveyed the female's social progress and empowerment, I think that it served a double purpose as a party propaganda. And even today, this image has been often used for, a CD, for the CD jacket or book cover design, although the connotation has changed. Similar examples of heroicization through a single photograph can be found also in various short graphic campaigns in former Yugoslavia. In 1949, during the Yugoslav five, first five-year plan, the Yugoslav version of Stahanov, known as Arya Sirotovich, was promulgated. On June 27, the party of the newspaper Borba reported that Breza coal miner Sirotovich had dug up 152 tons of coal, which is exactly 15 tons more than Stahan had dug, and broke the world record. Sirotovich's record has broken again and again by numerous workers in Yugoslavia, and Borba constantly reported this Yugoslav version of the rush to record break. In short, the same thing that happened in the Soviet Union as the Stahan White Movement now had occurred in Yugoslavia. By 1949, Tito had already voiced his opposition to Stalin, hence Sertanovich was often referred as a figure who went beyond Stalinov. Evidently, Yugoslav propagandists had no choice but to follow the Soviet model, yet at the same time they wanted to demonstrate their superiority to the Soviet Union. After Sertanovich's accomplishment, Tito invited Sertanovich to his residence and offered him uh, the following, following praise. Aria, congratulations on your victory over Stahanov. Stratenbich's image as a hero from Bosnia in a developed camp, uh, village fit perfectly with the narrative of Yugoslav miraculous economic growth. Borba and other mass media had popularized Stratenbich as the new Yugoslav new man. The Soviet concept of joy of a working life had been partially imported to Yugoslavia, but this joy was regarded depended neither on material wealth nor on cultural sophistication. Rather, it denoted the joy of honest poverty. The famous episode of Shortenbich tells that when Shortenbich first met Tito, Tito asked him, what do you want for a reward? And Shortenbich answered that he wants a bigger shovel uh, in order to work more effectively. 
and Tito then made a special order for big sugar for Shrotnovich, in which he gave the name Shrotnovichka. People liked him all the more for never changing, even after setting the world record. This difference may relate to the visual image differences between Stahanov and Shrotnovich. In contrast to the image of Stahanov, Shrotnovich's image was almost not unveiled until 1955. Many newspaper and magazine articles were devoted to Shrotnovich, but his photographs never appeared. Single exception is a photograph by Mira Dioic. Um, this one? Uh, in 1949, who took the profile of Shrotnovich in Veza. Although this picture appeared on the page of propaganda magazine Yugoslavia, it. Uh, sorry. Uh, this one on the left. But it, it somehow it failed to gain popularity. In 1955, Shrotnovich's portrait appeared in the front of the Yugoslav Thousand Dinner and after 1965 in, in front of the Ten Dinner. However, this famous portrait of Shrotnovich on Banknot was not, in fact, uh, a photograph of Shrotnovich. What I found in my archival research is the Volga article, which introduces uh, a coal mine shaft in Zenica, Bosnia, and the picture of this article is the same one as portrait of Shrotnovich on the uh, dinner banknote. But according to the article, this person is a refiner from Zenica named Sahib Tara, not, a short, not short and beach. And this picture was somehow chosen as a banknote design, must produce and then disseminate to all hands of US people, and all they believe that it is short and beach. There are other Yugoslav working heroes who gained the fame through a single photograph. For instance, so this is a T-shirt with this um, bank, Yugoslav bank now. And another example is uh, <coughs> another Yugoslav icon of Dagni is Nikola Shukovic, who brought Shortenbridge's record on June, June uh, 29. Is also known through a single photograph. In contrast to Stahanov, whose visual image was constantly renewed in order to depict his intellectual growth, the image of Shortenbridge was a massive reproduction of a single photograph of someone other than himself. This means that although all Yugoslavs knew the name of Shortenbridge and his deed, they never knew his actual face. So the Stahnovite workers were represented as accessible living figures. Yet Yugoslav workers were more like a symbolic icon without a physical presence. So now I'm moving to the conclusion. I analyzed the media image of partisan martyrs and working heroes and heroines. And the ethnography of Yugoslav heroes and heroines differs from that of Soviet in that the visual images of Yugoslav heroes and heroines were mostly limited to a single photograph. So why didn't Yugoslav propagandists utilize a variety of pictures in constructing these new heroes and heroines? It may be because propagandists in post war Yugoslavia feared the, the, the specific information about the ethnic identity of these heroes and heroines may revive unpleasant memories about ethnic conflict in the World, World War II. So they used a symbolic single photograph without any personal backgrounds. And also, it may be because of the official ideology of early Yugoslavia, which emphasized the, uh, the equality of U all Yugoslav citizens. So they didn't need a series of visual images which illustrate the process of development. But what is more important is, I think, uh, the they had the need for a state building mythology and a single legitimate collective memory. In Soviet Union too, immediately after the death of Lenin, there was a tendency to render images of Lenin as consistent as possible. And the similar phenomena happened in the in Imperial Japan in its state building phase in the 1930s. The Yugoslav partisan martyrs and working heroes were, I suppose, required to serve as a kind of mythical figures, not as living citizens. A 
single impressive photograph may serve this myth better than any detailed and varied personal presence. That's my current place is that the Yugoslav propagandists use these photographs which capture, uh, which capture a fragmented moment of history in order to give a cult value to the newly created heroes and heroines. Since the portrait photo functions as proof of their presence, a single impressive portrait photo could ossify the moment shot by camera as a historical hallmark and provide a cult veneration to symbolic figures of nation building. I suppose that this is why, because why these photos are still used in the former Yugoslavia today, even in commodified forms. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for the interesting Especially for the photos. Who wants to speak in discussion? But how they, uh, how people uh, use it for worship. So, and uh, how they, uh, I mean, uh, so the relationship to the symbolism or to the orthodox mythology is reflected in the attitude, how they treat those pictures, how they put those pictures in a room or something. So. Thanks so much for the suggestion. Do you want to speak more? Yes. yes. I'm afraid uh, uh, you have uh, misunderstood me a little bit. I didn't mean uh, uh, icons, I didn't mean uh, uh, Byzantine tradition. Uh, with Byzantine tradition, it's quite opposite. It's not you uh, watch the icon, the icon watches you. Hmm. That's that's a very specific nature of this sort of representation. You know? uh, uh, I mean, uh, symbolism as an uh, art and literature trend, <coughs> in the philosophy of uh, Silver Age and these sort of things, with, uh, with uh, its idea of su uh, super nature heroes, super nature human beings. Do you think it, it, it has anything to do with the presentation? <coughs> I thought uh, maybe the icon which looks you is more related to those pictures because there is a story that when people wanted to say something against Tito, they turned the Tito's portraiture over in order to not for, so he cannot hear them. It's symbol, but symbolic, but <laughs> magic. Yeah, yeah. 
but those heroes, uh, partisan martyrs, Roman heroes, are not so supernatural uh, figures because they are human beings, and what they did is not so supernatural. Because they, he invented the way how to dug up the coals, so it's not so supernatural. But I think uh, <coughs> the hero worship and cult of personality is something different. And I, so I don't know how it relates to symbolism representations, but <laughs> thank you so much for your suggestion. I'll think about it. Yes, please. Small question. Uh, you come from Japan, uh, and I have a uh, uh, very value uh, imagination. Or how do you, uh, in modern Japan, uh, interpret uh, the emperor? Uh, is the emperor of Japan uh, a super human being or just an ordinary human being? Thank you. Thank you very much for your interesting question because it really depends on the age. Uh, during the World War II, emperor was a supernatural god, and it is. But it's interesting that uh, Japanese uh, authority prohibited to print uh, the emperor's image. So in the newspaper, in the magazines, there is no photo of emperors, but there is a photo, uh, a portraiture of emperor, which is uh, gave, uh, which. Uh, Japanese government gave to schools and organizations, so they have to put it in a small uh, box or small room, and they have to hide it, because people are, have believe that if they look at the um, emperor, that is insult, because this is good God, so they have to hide it. So that can the but the I think the representation of cult personality is really interesting and that is intermutually related uh, with uh, another uh, countries, especially during World War II, because Japanese government had a strategy how to create the god out of human beings, and that strategy is I think uh, they. In, in some way imitate something and in Japan we had the propaganda magazine which they uh, imitated Soviet uh, Soviet Union's magazine so they knew the strategy in Soviet Union and in German and so on yeah think about the audience <laughs> this is interesting paper yes and our last uh, speaker will be yeah, Satori. Ah, you are here. <laughs> yes. Lena Nacharniki Ristokis Nationalis Gazetars, the Roy Narodnich, Kies in the Balkan. Polkot Ronis in Karat Georgi.